you're a commercial satellite company. Uh, you've got around 50 uh, fixed or geosynchronous satellites uh, on a global level and around 20 orbits um, the African continent. So a very interesting space that you're playing in right now. Uh, tell us about uh, your company and tell us about um, how you uh, are planning to move even more forward when it comes to Africa. Well, we've been covering Africa since 1965. So we're really a pioneer in providing telecommunications infrastructure for the continent. And it has changed over time. We've seen a convergence between media and telecommunications. So we do everything from direct-to-home television distribution to actually providing broadband solutions in rural Africa. Well, let's touch on the broadband solutions because Africa is definitely lagging. We are starting to see uh, you know, a bit of growth coming through on that front. What role is Intelsat playing? Well, we're, we're behind the scenes mm -hmm. powering the other providers. So we help uh, cell phone companies, networking companies, all kinds of uh, providers that are looking to grow and provide solutions to their customers. So it really is the enabling infrastructure behind their solutions. Taking a look at each satellite and, and the cost, uh, $350 million, is that, is that the right amount that we're looking at? It varies. It's everything from $250 million to $650 million. So it's very capital intensive. Mm -hmm. but they have a long life, they last up to 15 or 16 years, and we get good returns after we pay them back. It sounds like a very lucrative business at this point in time, and we also know that China is starting to make quite a bit of headway. Uh, tell us about the, the technologies behind it and also the suppliers and the, and the demand scenario as well. So the suppliers are primarily European and American in terms of manufacturing the satellites today. Uh, and, and we look for growth in uh, new technologies coming forward so we can have better efficiencies. In terms of China, I'll just make an editorial here. China is a vast market, as we all know, but it's also the most closed market. So we don't do a lot of business there. On the other hand, we'd like to do more business mm -hmm. there. But they have entered into the space, but not as much on the telecommunications or media side. Well, taking a look at new satellites uh, and the launch of, of various programs from Intelsat, uh, we know that there's a shortage of capacity across the continent. So obviously, there needs to be a lot of investment going forward. And that's what we're doing. So we have a $900 million CapEx program just this year alone. And of our nine satellites that are currently in production, five will cover Africa, including a new Dawn satellite, which is really a satellite uh, by the Africans, for the Africans. And we've done that in partnership with a local uh, entrepreneur and its convergence partners. And the banking uh, industry here really supported us in 2008 during the crisis. We, get, we got that through, and it's a $250 million satellite. Well, just looking at the funding programs as well um, from Intelside, where do you get the real funding from? Well, we're private, privately owned, but we have public debt, yeah. so we have bonds as well. But we, we really self-fund everything we do through our cash flows. Looking at HD and also the broadband scenario, some are really concerned that uh, the fact that we're launching new technologies, this could, of course, impact capacity as well. Of course, you play quite a big role in this. Yeah, so what we're doing is using compression. So it's really about squeezing more of the video and more of the data into less bandwidth and allows our customers to be more efficient. That's really the name of the game going forward. We're going to be doing more and more of that. So as we see high definition programming, even 3D at some point, we'll be able to provide that through well, our system. Will this uh, not produce a major spike in demand for bandwidth? Well, we hope it does uh, because we're putting new capacity into yeah. the market. We've seen steady growth over the years. Africa has been a wonderful market for us. About 17% of our revenues, or 450 million U.S. dollars in 2009, come from Africa alone. Mm -hmm. So it, it really has been a, a growth engine in a variety of applications, as I mentioned. Mm. Okay, well, a variety of applications. Just looking at the growth scenarios on the African continent, we are expected to see incredible growth going forward. We are a developing uh, continent. Uh, in, in terms of uh, assisting the development on the continent, in what way can these new technologies assist growth? Well, in Africa. I think we help bridge the digital divide. So when we look at rural Africa, we're providing advanced communications into the villages that would have none. So bringing broadband and bringing other communications in helps. We help other corporations in areas where they don't have a good telecommunications infrastructure. We're supporting the development of business in, in Africa. And then, of course, giving choice in terms of programming, including CNBC. Yeah. We distribute that throughout the continent. In terms of the costing, though, um, clearly there's quite a bit a big demand, and purely because you're such a strong player in the market, yes. uh, you have quite a, big, a, a quite a big say when it comes to uh, pricing in in the industry. Uh, and of course, it is a very expensive and lucrative industry for yourselves. Do you see that changing going forward? Because as we see increased demand, perhaps prices will come down as well. 
Oh, we've seen increase in demand, but we've also seen supply go up. Mm -hmm. So we see a market equilibrium occurring. So we, we think that we'll be more efficient over time, so we'll be more cost effective. That's why we work on these new technologies. But we also see new competitors come into play, and all that allows our customers to have a cost-effective solution. You alluded to um, hybrid networks a little earlier. Tell me a little bit more about it and the blend of satellite fiber and wireless technologies. So what we do is we combine over 50 satellites with 28,000 miles of fiber around the world and seven teleports. So this hybrid solution is about the future. And we have an IP network, so it's an internet protocol network that allows us to use whatever our customers want. Sometimes they want to distribute through satellites, sometimes fiber, sometimes both. We can do that all over the world and do it ubiquitously, and that's, mm. that's really what differentiates And of course, us. when you look at the satellite industry, it's far more accessible than, than uh, ensuring that you've got the fiber network, especially yes. on big continents such as Africa, trying to link India and Europe to Africa. My, my belief is that our company, with our infrastructure and our satellites, covers more of the world than any other company on Earth. Mm. We literally cover the entire Earth. We have a little coverage problems in the South and North Pole, but not a lot of people. <laughs> Okay, well, Dave, also just taking a look at uh, what is more economically viable for Africa. I mean, we've seen the SeaCom cable launched um, in Africa, and, we, of course, we're seeing a lot more uh, projects coming to the fore when it comes to laying out of cables. What is more economically viable to ensure that you've got these satellite systems or to lay down uh, the cable and fiber networks? It, it's really both. Mm -hmm. Africa really needed to bring the undersea cable or on the east coast and the west coast and then connect it through a fiber hub and our satellites, and that's really the way it's gone. So. It's efficient to bring them both together. Mm. Uh, just looking forward and looking at the, technolo the technological advances that we've seen, we keep hearing about new things coming to the fore, HD, 3D, and various technologies. Um, from your perspective, and obviously because you're such a strong industry player, where do you see things going from here? Well, I think everything eventually will become high-definition programming. and uh, We cover the, the whole world with hundreds of channels of high def. I think the 3D will take longer. One, because you have to use glasses. And when you have the glasses, when they're a little awkward, they have to get standards. And then, of course, you don't want vertigo. So you don't want someone feeling ill as they watch 3D. But ultimately, I think that'll take off too. Maybe in a few years, we'll see more standardization, and then that'll occur as well. So it's really fascinating to look at the quality that we can get through high definition, and then adding the 3D element in a new way really changes the game.